And now we just hope that that everyone's okay. Reiner's okay. Also, we 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 did it. We did it. We did it. I don't think Aaron's done, but we took down his massive form. I don't think he's dead. That that would be too too abrupt. There needs to be something with Aaron and Mikasa. Was wow? Was that really the wow? Right. That makes yeah. That's right. That's when he became sort of an observed character from the outside. What are the chances? No one can say... Yeah, yeah, right. And no one can say they didn't do their best. Arm is okay. Just waiting on Reiner confirmation. Reiner's fine. Yes! This thing. The biological evil. Yeah, this thing can go. <laughs> this thing can just die. <laughs> <laughs> John John is over it, totally over it. Eren. Eren. <laughs> Gabby, get your gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. That would have been terrible. <laughs> it's still alive. Just like Connie's mom. Wait, can, can you transform them now? No, 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 not... No, not... Wait, why are you leaving them behind? Double shoulder pass. No, please don't... This can't be happening. Damn it. Oh, I wanted Kani to survive so badly. I mean, I John John. Wait, maybe they can be reverted. Maybe they can be reverted. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm with Reiner. It's not happening. I, I don't. I don't want to believe it. This show gets me like no other. This is the. I mean, it's uncountable how many times I've been so like destroyed by someone's death, but also so like joyful is the wrong word, but I guess it's something like a feeling of gratitude. Speaking of completing arcs, right? I mean, what more could Connie and John John have done? Like thinking about what they were what they were born into as characters, how many things they went through, and how they attacked Eren, the greatest god monster of all time, without any Titan powers at all, and were key in stopping the rumbling. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else you could ask for. Speaking of legacy, they 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 honored it, <laughs> to say the least. Erwin Smith would be proud. They get the badge of Erwin, the highest possible honor in life. <laughs> Is that Connie Titan? Oh. <laughs> Reiner's still going. Speaking of who would have thought, man. Armin and Eren as Titans battling. I didn't... Oh, Gabby too. Not alone. You use it. That could be the slogan of this whole show. <laughs> Big decision to make. Who would have thought? Continued. Do you though? Oh, I see. She just... She went back into... Delusion. Or is it a vision? Would you want to go back? I don't know. It wasn't great before. It wasn't so amazing. And I can't quite wrap my mind around why, but never in my life have I learned a truth or learned some way I was totally wrong or learned a secret, even if it was truly horrifying. Have I thought, I wish I could unknow that, if that makes sense. I don't know if everyone feels this way, but I would wager a guess that most people probably do. Give me the pain of the truth over the sweetness in like a deception. So much of the struggle in the show has been a fight for the truth for both the characters and the audience. I don't think that's a coincidence at all. I, I think there's a, a very strong link between what is true and what is good. It's easy to get stuck, right? Because sometimes we don't know how to to cope with the truth or we don't know how to navigate a new truth. So we would prefer to reject the truth. But coming around that corner and learning how to reconcile it, learning how to navigate it, feeling okay with it, it's almost always, a, I was gonna say a pleasurable thing, but maybe more like recognizable as just a good thing.
She grabbed that drop so perfectly. Yeah, I think that is the answer. What is this, an alternate reality? ヒストリアを地獄に落として永遠も殺し合いをすることもできなかったそれならもうあと四年の余生を静かに。いや、みんなはもう。あと四年の余生を静かに。いや、みんなはもう。あと四年の余生を静かに。いや、みんなはもう
Genocide. And Mikasa is going to pay a really heavy price. No one, yes. I don't remember him ever showing this this kind of display for Mikasa. I think she should know, as much as that's gonna suck. Maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe. I don't know if he's seen the beach at all. That is un unfathom unfathomable. There we go. So much for freedom. Whoa, they said it directly. That is crazy, Armin. It's not. It's not at all. The predetermined thing is tough, right? It's a tough thing to wrap your mind around because there's no real direct parallel, obviously, for Eren's time loop thing in real life. My hunch is that a lot of people will take this as a way to kind of absolve Eren of his sins, but just the way it's hitting me based on my general outlook of life. The fact that it's not possible to change it doesn't mean he wasn't making decisions. It's tricky, but the fact that he can't change it is because he is who he is. And the person he is, the flawed person he is, is going to make those decisions. And you might even argue that one of those conditions that creates that cycle, he's the kind of person that lacks freedom in a very important important personal spiritual sense. And I think the show is stating that with that line of being a slave to freedom. He's possessed by an idea. And I guess it's also notable that the idea is largely born from his pain and anger. To me, Aaron's outlook is absolutely absurd on just so many levels. Yet sadly prolific, the whole like, I have no choice. The idea that because my cause is justified, my, my goal is justified, the means are justified. The idea that you can separate value and worth of life by group, the conflation of terrible people in a group for the whole group. For example, the, the military leaders of Marley versus like all of the innocent people in Marley, and for that matter, the Marlene view of the Paradisians, but in a small and limited way, and in a way that is unsatisfying on some level in a practical way because of the result. The motley crew of people that oppose Eren are very close to an answer, and it's a sacrifice. It's not just sacrificing yourself, not just sacrificing the, the comfort and warmth of easy answers for the pain of nuance and complexity, but also sacrificing control a little bit, the illusion of control over what humanity is and what people are, letting humanity be what it is, and them playing their best role in it, like Erwin Smith before them. And they themselves cannot and tragedy or war any more than Aaron can. Yet it's so clear to me that they've won. They, they've won in the best way there is to win, which is fighting for the truth, fighting against all odds to do what they felt was right. And that will lead to something better. That will lead to understanding. Just the fact that they even demonstrated that in their lifetimes means it exists, it wins. And that might sound hopelessly idealistic. I would argue that it's it's the most pragmatic. Like it's the only thing that works. The individual struggle for goodness, instead of like looking to fight evil out there, but fighting evil and finding truth and goodness within is the only thing that creates the, the kind of node, the, the strong node in the grid that creates a strong web of humanity. And the, the more that that is understood, the faster that grows, the less violence there is, the less suffering there is, the less easy outs there are, the more difficult truths are accepted, the more caution people will place in blaming others or casting aspersions on entire groups or finding false identities that give them some kind of momentary comfort from the, the pain of reality. And I think Part of the beauty of it is doing that and, and fighting for it. Even if you don't believe it's possible, even if there always is war, you know, you did your part. You were that unbreakable source of light. I imagine they'll be heroes. That's really powerful and amazing in its own right at a small level. The bigger thing is what they've done in the eyes of, I'll say God, and I trust you guys to understand I don't mean like a religious God. Aaron's legacy will forever be genocide and robbing the world of that infinitely large spark, that incalculable energy of each human life for 80% of the world. Okay, it's honest. Among others. <laughs> yeah, among other things. I mean, there's clarity, at least. It's tragic. Say something nice, Armin. <laughs> Say something nice to Eren. No, no, he would. I mean, who, who hasn't had that thought? You couldn't see it at the beach. This 
Don't no, let him remember. Okay, okay, good. Oh, right, because this is sort of outside of time. Armin does remember this now. This is all coming back to him. Oh, I, oh man, so many mixed feelings. Eren's so dark and horrifying, but their friendship is beautiful. It's so bizarre and complicated and beautiful. I'm dying. I'm having like a religious experience watching this, this episode. Or maybe it's just the raw adrenaline pumping through my veins. <laughs> And I feel that they will be, in, in a way I can't even fully explain. And that just hit like a ton of bricks. Mikasa, are you- Oh, she's holding it. She's holding it. Like her baby. Yeah, that's their friend. Their friend the devil. Yes! Oh, he visited all of them. So you're saying Kaji's mom is alive? <laughs> he didn't like you. You told him he was the, the real enemy. This reunion, though. These reunions. Wow, they all made it. To Aaron's credit, and Levi lived. They were watching. They were, and they were there. And Levi got to carry that out. Yes! Couldn't have a finale without Erwin. And Hanji. The scouts have served their purpose. Wow, Levi crying. But yeah. Wait, I'm... I want to believe it. Okay. I got my hopes up there. <laughs> For Runner to get that love is amazing. There's so much going on right now. The fact that they still love Aaron is like, oh, despite everything. The tree on the hill. I think you should go with her. There's still a lot of work to do. How do you prove you're not a titan? I hope this ends peacefully, obviously. God, wouldn't that be the most most attack on titan thing to do? <laughs> like, old school attack on titan, just have him die now. But I think the significance of this event, regardless of the outcome, is that there's going to be conflict no matter what. That's a given. I also feel like... <sighs> I mean, easy for me to say, right? From the comfort of this room and safety. If I'm them, at this point, in my development and after everything I've been through, it's like, you want to shoot me, shoot me. I'll die with my head held high. Armin's still working. Armin just can't get a rest. And Armin, we trust. Commander of the... Okay, that too. <laughs> Here's his head. Speaking of full arcs, Armin. Armin's journey. He's just the man. That's all I have to say about that. It's complicated. Bye. She was giving birth. Wow, are really in the epilogue already? Oh boy. Some familiar beats. It's amazing how the, the same thing can be right and wrong. When I was talking earlier about the, the crew being like perfect in their remote individual lives, a lot of that is like the fight, you know? It's not fighting people, or that's not the origin or focal point. It's fighting the, the noble struggle for a good existence, fighting half-truths, fighting evil answers, fighting so that their base instincts don't run away from them. So this repeated thing in the show of fight, you know, it's not wrong, but it has to be at that really high level, not this sort of watered down, diluted, easy version, which is so often the case with ideas. But the cycle continues. Exactly. Speaking of webs. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, 
彼が望もうと望むまいと私たちには託されました。Do the best with what you have now. It's a choice. 巨人のいない世界を。It's a choice that they make moment to moment and day by day. Never perfectly, but always striving for the best. いい匂いもする。何度も言うが、既婚者に列状を抱くのはやめろ。気持ち悪い。I can lust after whoever I want. 歴史の教科書を読む。Speaking of lust. 馬の図鑑と間違えてないか Is that a reference to a certain infamous Attack on Titan mid card? Speaking of ringing out into eternity. Oh, they broke the curse too. That was fortunate. Are we talking to the audience right now? でもあんたたちだって、ファナから自殺しに来たわけじゃない。I mean, to be fair, everyone in this room has experienced a lot worse than hostile diplomacy. こうして地獄に向かってることが答えさ。調査兵団は夢見がちで。Damn right. Damn right. The fact that this man is alive. <laughs> he gets to be the caring man he always wanted to be. It's beautiful. そのすべてを話そう。I mean, this, this show could be the, just the book of humanity. Good. Epilogue 2. <laughs> Don't end. <laughs> Never end. More. Eren. Eren. Three flowers. Is it for the three of them? Of course. Is Aaron a bird? Aaron's a bird, confirmed. How is it possible I can feel this many conflicting emotions at the same time? My heart feels like it's gonna burst. This is like a time lapse of. We're passing through time, right? I would love it if it was just a, a little bit bigger. <laughs> Hello, Mikasa. Oh, you don't need to show me that far ahead. <laughs> Let me bask in the fact that they're living, that they survived all that. Oh, that was dark. Yeah, war continues. <laughs> that was sort of a shot at Eren, though. I, like, it's a lot of things at once. It, it's, I actually love that as a final thing. One interpretation of that is just them dunking on Eren. You did nothing. Attack on Titan, everyone. Had to remind you. True to its DNA till the end. Oh, yes. 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 Third epilogue. These birds just get to exist despite all of it. Here's hoping this leads into Attack on Titan 2. This is a this is setting up for a new show. Oh, no. Oh, no. This looks awfully familiar. Oh, no. I've heard that one before. <laughs> I'll believe it when I... I don't, know, I don't know. Big doubt. Well, that was one hell of a fourth season. It only took 45 years and 90 episodes. Wow. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. I think it was the perfect ending. I hate to see it end, but it's nice to have something like the, the, the full picture, even though it's bigger than I'll ever be able to fully comprehend. This is the longest show in terms of when I started it to when I'm finishing it I've ever done on this channel. Also, definitely the most controversial. It's interesting to think, you know, I was very fortunate, like I've said many times before, this is a testament to you guys for not spoiling anything for me. But I did receive a lot of comments about people's sentiments about the, the full story, people who knew the ending. And you hear a lot of different things. One of them was that it was a disappointment, which is a shock to me having finished that. There were no cop-outs. It, it was exactly how it had to be. It was a fully realized vision. If I had to speculate, I would say maybe the reason it was uncomfortable for some viewers was perhaps an attachment to some of the, the very things the show is trying to fight back against. Obviously, a big part of that is going to be Eren and his mission. And what I think is more remarkable about it than I expected even was the fact that you really get it all. Like, speaking of fighting for complexity and fighting for nuance and fighting for truth, the writing of this in my opinion, did not take any easy outs, did not take any shortcuts. It let you bask in the, the full, painful, beautiful reality of the whole thing simultaneously. So like, Eren is a monster. He is the devil. His plan is terrible. He was not free. He also did good, beautiful things. He's an evil character and a lovable character, as difficult as that is to fully sink your teeth into. His plan is 
lovable for the fact that it was for his friends, right? Like that's something I think everyone probably agrees on and hateable for what he did to people who are not his friends, basically everyone who wasn't his friend. I mean, I think that complexity, it, it ripples throughout the whole thing. There is no one character or person or, or anything that is just, you know, good incarnate or evil incarnate. Going back to one of my absolute favorite things from the show, do you know who the real enemy is? It's you. You're the real enemy. We're all the real enemy, but that's only part of it. We also have the power, uh, the freedom, I guess, if we choose it, to not let that win, to have a force that overcomes it that is better than that through like pain and, and sacrifice and blood, sweat, tears, giving up comfort, giving up sweetness of illusions, the deceptive pleasure of like taking one's own pain and one's own frustration and lack of feeling in control and like pinning that on some evil out there with the thinking that if only that thing were eliminated, then my pain would go away. As if the pain isn't a function of ourselves and how we view the world and our flesh and blood struggles and the trauma of our past and the confusion about how to navigate a difficult and, and dangerous world. The heroes of the story are heroes of the story, but like it doesn't make them any less capable of evil. It's more about the individual moment and the choice. And to me, the show captures that so beautifully. Now that I've watched this, I, I can't wait to go and read people's opinions about the ending, the end credit sequence where the war continues, where it seems like the Titan cycle will be starting all over again. I wonder if people will read that as a bleak ending because I don't. I, I actually feel uplifted by it. My reading of it, it, it's not that like, well, life just sucks and things will be terrible forever. It's more like you can't see all of cause and effect. Even Aaron, who actually could in some crazy like magical way, couldn't see the future beyond that. You can't understand that and you don't have control over that. You can't engineer a perfect world. What you can do is play your role well and fight to be the best possible iteration of yourself in the moment you live. Every moment, in every decision, as much as you can, with limited information and, and with all the challenges that this show does not shy away from at all. Like, you, you cannot imagine a more tragic backdrop for these characters, yet look at what emerges. And to look at it a little bit more optimistically, I, I do think that while there are cycles of chaos and violence, and while it will always exist in some measure, I do believe that the needle is inched ever closer to a better world. It just will take a very, very, very long time. But the more each person does their part, the better the chances for someone out there 2,000 years or beyond. And even if it doesn't, what more could you want? You know, what more could you ask for in terms of meaning of life than standing tall against the evil and refusing to become it, despite every incentive to the contrary. To look at it in a very zoomed out way and perhaps coldly, to Zeke's point, believe it or not, about all of life is just a multiply. There's something fundamental there, which is that there is sort of an underlying punishment and reward system for, for all of life, which is natural and sexual selection and evolution. That which can multiply the best will multiply. Sometimes that's deceptive, right? Because sometimes strategies that help you multiply really well now undo themselves over enough time. But like evolution is patient. The universe is patient. It will figure that out. It'll it'll sort out what actually works given a long enough time frame. Interestingly, it's not just biological life that goes through these forces. It's also ideas. I mean, basically anything that is, is subject to these forces. It, it's axiomatic to existence itself. And so it will run its course in the way it has to run its course and problems will get solved. I think that's just unsatisfying to us or just hard to fully connect with because it so far extends the time span of our lives. And sort of counterintuitively, a function of this is that we care the most about our own individual survival. It's one long iterative process beyond our understanding. And so I think you harmonize that simultaneously seeing how small you are in it, but also how big you are in it. You know, like no matter how small something is of a whole, if that whole is unchanging, and as far as I can tell, there's only one timeline that we live in. And once the past is written, it's written and you're just a part of it. While a molecule of that thing may be insignificantly tiny, it's also indistinguishable from the whole. It wouldn't be the whole without that thing. So you are there, you were there, you will always be there. And the question is, well, what kind of molecule do you want to be? You know, what kind of essential role do you want to play? Do you want to be someone who gives into your hatred that takes an identity because it makes you feel good, clinging to false hopes or false truths, not fighting hard enough to develop yourself, not turning over the stones that you're looking at because you're afraid of what's underneath? Or would you rather show up in as many moments as possible to make the choice that is difficult but you feel is right, even navigating imperfectly? With that as the goal, it's not nothing. Even if it's not as glamorous as like Irwin's final charge, it's the same thing. It's a heavy weight to bear. I think that's part of the resistance to it because once you see it, you can't unsee it and it gives you sort of like a very clear course and path, and you're looking down that path and you see like work and pain. No wonder, you know, you, you want to turn back. But to accept it is also beautiful because it puts you in alignment with your place in, in the universe and with all of time. I don't think I've ever seen a show that was so important. I don't think I've ever seen something that, that tapped into my, my deepest fears about humanity in the way Attack on Titan did. I see elements of the villainy in this show every day. I think one of the things I'd like to see more that this show really made crystal clear for me, and I'll, I'll forever be grateful to it for that, is that you don't need to pick a side. You have to pick what value 
values you stand for. And you apply that not to a, a faction or a side, but to every individual moment and person and situation, especially in yourself, as, as painful and as difficult as that is. We want easy tribal answers. We're hardwired for that. But if you really break it down in a very significant way, there, there isn't as much reality to like a nation or a group or an ideology or, or whatever, as there is to like each individual life that you're throwing under the same umbrella. You want the highest form of the argument. And that requires you letting go of answers a little bit. It, it requires a lot of letting go. For that matter, I think often the people who are the most adamant about hating particular groups or, or ideologies or whatever have the least power to affect anything. It's just like hate. The enemy is not out there, it's in you. And that's a good thing because it gives you something to do that actually you can control, that you do have an influence over. And to make it even more complicated, it's not just the people alive right now. It's not just the hopes for people and their souls who exist. It's everyone who will ever exist in the future. All of that, in my opinion, undermines that very prevalent premise that by any means necessary, you save a specified target. And now I'm sitting here not wanting to end the video because I don't want this to be over. I guess I'll close by expressing my gratitude for the show and the fact that I think it's one of the most complete looks on life and the human struggle that I've ever seen. For me, it's biblical. It's a sacred work. It's tapped into the veins of truth. It is art in the best possible imagination of that word. And for that, I'm extremely grateful that I got to have this experience. From the absolute depths of my soul, thank you to everybody who's who's watched these videos. Whether we totally agree or totally disagree, doesn't matter. The fact that you guys were here and let this happened and made this possible is something that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. I would love to revisit this show someday in the form of a Q&A, but this time I think I would like to give it some time. I want to watch the show again from the beginning and also my my reactions again from the beginning. Because of the, the size and scope of it, to do anything further on it, I feel I would want to go as deep as I possibly could, which will require some effort. But one day, I promise I will come back to this. Maybe even a rewatch. I hope it comes through how much I love you guys, how much this means to me. Thank you for being a part of this journey, and I'll see you for Attack on Titan 2 to you in a million years.